So in our series, I Believe, and this month we're talking about key things that we believe at City Church and then how we apply them uh, to our lives in a very practical way. So last weekend we talked about the creed, talked about, you know, some main doctrines of our church and how they apply to our life. Check that message out if you missed it. And so today I want to illustrate a message and I want to talk about uh, a topic entitled a brand new look. Everyone say a brand new look. Now it's great to have a new car. Uh, to have like new carpet and you have that new smell, come on, right? New outfit, new haircut like mine, your mind doesn't change too much. It's good to have things that are new. When you and I come to Jesus, though, he gives you and I a brand new look that's different than anything else. I'm going to talk about that today. I want to illustrate that and fortify this truth in our lives as we move forward in our faith and make this very practical. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Colossians, uh, Colossians chapter 2. If not, just follow me on the screen. This whole chapter is amazing. You know, Paul is talking about, you know, we're free from rules and we're free in Christ. It's a whole discourse here that's profound. I'm going to read uh, three verses, starting at verse 13. And he says, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive. Everyone say alive. I love that. With Christ, for he forgave how much? One more time. How much? Isn't that good to know? All of our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. And so I want to go... Uh, through these verses today, particularly verse 13 and 14, and empower this truth. This is a big truth for us, the city, what we believe from Scripture. Really, this is for any Christian, uh, I'm sure, believes this at some level, and we're big on this here. First, notice in verse 13, anyone that hasn't come to Christ, anyone that is, has not taken that step, notice Paul uses the terminology, they are dead in their sins. Now, he's not talking about a physical death where our breath is gone from our body. Even in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, you know, God told them you can eat from any tree, but don't eat from this one tree. If you do, you will surely die. Not talking about a physical death, talking about a spiritual death. Just stay with me here as I lay this out because I want to just build this up. Any person that has not received Jesus, their spirit, in other words, the part of the human you know, person, the human body, that will live forever, that part of them is dead. Bill Bright, a great leader in the Christian world, said there's a God-shaped void in every human being. And that void will not be filled until we receive Jesus. Money can't fill it. Love, you know, really can't fill it by itself romantically or friendship, you know, wise. Success, achieving goals, all that stuff is good. Nothing wrong with it. It's just it doesn't have the power to fulfill that God-shaped void in us. And so notice that we were dead. Now, if you don't know Christ today, I pray you take your next step and you receive Jesus like that young lady did last night named Amanda. If you have received Jesus, I pray you're fortified in this truth. Because here's, here's here's the reality. The Bible says that all of us had a record against us. Now, if you were like me, I had a long, long record, how about you, of stuff I did wrong. If you don't agree with me, you're lying, and you can admit to it later in private. But And so we were dead in our sins. Things like, well, see, now Jesus has made us whole so much, not even working. But now stay with me. Things like this. Now, anger by itself isn't a sin. Because the Bible says, be angry and sin not. But when we're dead in our sins, even after we come to Christ, how many of the anger by itself isn't sin, but anger can cause outburst of wrath, foul and abusive language, physical confrontation, that is wrong. Anger can cause wrong things. Maybe that was on the record or is on the record against us. Maybe this one, which I think is huge for all of us as people in the world, pride. And there's a healthy sense of pride. There's a good sense of pride, like brushing your teeth. That's good pride. 
shower, good pride. Clean clothes. Can I get a witness on good pride? Aren't you glad for good pride? But we know that pride in a destructive manner can lead to wrong behavior, the record against us. I'm just going to do a couple, just about three here for time. Envy is huge. This can produce jealousy, manipulation, strife, not being thankful for what God's done for us, looking at what other people have and angry about what he hasn't done. These are just a few things. I know that I had this definitely on my record. Maybe one of these three stands out to you. Maybe it doesn't. But all of us have a record or had a record. And notice in verse 13, when you and I come to Jesus, in other words, when you receive Jesus into your life, this should never become common, folks. This should always stay alive in us. When you and I receive Jesus, Paul said, you and I become alive in Christ and that he has forgiven all of our sins. That's good news, isn't it? It's so important that we are alive in our faith. If you don't know Jesus, come to him and become alive. And then for those of us in this room and online on that campus, for those of us that have received Jesus, I would ask you, are we alive in our faith? Because when you receive Christ, that spirit on the inside of us, our spirit that will live forever, because when we die of old age, if Jesus doesn't come in our lifetime, our spirit will leave our body. It will go somewhere. And when you and I receive Jesus, that spirit becomes alive. In other words, when we hear messages, now that our spirit's alive, man, we get something out of it. We want to worship. We want to come because our spirit is reaching for God. All humanity, folks, is reaching for something. And when you and I have Jesus, I'm just, I'm, I'm simple enough to believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the answer for all that we need. So when you and I receive Jesus, our spirit comes alive, and now, man, I can have purpose and hope. It's a little bit longer. I'm going to lay this out. When we're dead in our sins, it produces a few things. I believe it produces endless searching for peace. We want world peace, of course, but I think the greatest commodity is inner peace. Outside of Christ, people cannot, they can have peace at points and happiness, but the Bible says that God gives us peace that passes understanding, and Jesus said that he gives us peace that the world or the things of this world can't give and can't take it away. When we're dead in our sins, it leaves us to a sense of I believe um, being filled up with our own thoughts and our own beliefs. And if we're honest, our thoughts and our own beliefs aren't always good. So when we're dead in our sins, it's producing wrong things and we're just, there's this void and we're empty. However, when we come to Jesus and we become alive in Jesus, as verse 13 says, forgiven of all of our sins, I believe now we're filled up with a love that's unconditional. We're filled up with that peace that passes understanding. It, means, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect, but it means that we have access to a peace that passes our circumstance. When you and I come to Jesus, it empowers us with promise, potential, and fulfillment. Folks, please hear me. Jesus is the only way to live this life. Because we can try in so many other ways and venues to attain and come to peace with ourselves, but we will never come to that end until we receive Jesus. Are you alive today? In this room and online, I want to ask you, are you alive? Are you alive? Is your spirit alive in Jesus? For those of us that have received Jesus, are we alive in our faith? Paul said, awake unto righteousness. It's possible to go to sleep. Be coasting. I pray that no one in this room is existing. I pray that no one is just eking by, waiting to pay bills, just to keep the lights turned on, hoping that something works out. I pray that no one is in that circumstance. And if you are, there's something better for you. This Christian life isn't just about going to heaven. It's about having heaven on earth and having purpose and fulfillment and purpose and promise in your life and living for more than paying our bills. It's so much more than that. And Jesus has come to give us this. 
So I want you to evaluate. I'm evaluating myself. Am I alive in my faith? As Christ followers, are we passionate or are we just kind of, well, this is normal and this is common and I'm okay now. No, 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 no. This, should, this topic right here should excite all of us. Man, this is a, I'm alive in Jesus. I can live and not die. I can be in eternity with God. We all have a record. We've all had a record. And what's profound is in verse 14, the Apostle Paul says, he canceled the record against us. And he put it to the cross. And he nailed it there. Have you ever wondered, I've wondered this, how in the world can God call me clean when I know in myself sometimes I'm still not clean? How can he do that? How can I stand before God clean and innocent when I know the record? We know our record, don't we? We know what we've done. We know what's been against us. But yet this verse says he canceled this record by nailing it to the cross. How did he do this? Well, in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, this is a verse spoken to leaders, but I want to read just really, I want to highlight one phrase of it. So guard yourselves with God's and God's people, excuse me, feed and shepherd God's flock, his church purchased with his own blood over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. Now, this may sound different to some of you. It may sound awkward, but when Jesus died on the cross, his blood was shed. Seven main ways. When his blood was shed, he made a way for you and I to be clean. When he died, I love this. No matter the record against us, when we come to Jesus, he washes our record away. Not only does he wash our record away, he gives us a new record to start with. Isn't that amazing? So in God's eyes, as I'm painting this, I want you to think about this. In God's view of you and I, when you and I come to Jesus, anger or pride or acts of anger or cussing someone out or fighting someone or abusing a woman or doing something horrible you know, with anger or pride, lying to people, being racist, all the, all the things that come with pride, when you and I come to Jesus, God doesn't remember it anymore because Jesus' blood washes it out and he totally cancels the record that should be against us, but because of Jesus, it's totally erased. This right here, I love talking about this. I don't talk about this often and probably we should be talking about this more in the modern church. This is a truth that needs to be instilled into each of us. As I'm doing this, I want, you to, I want to say a couple of things. This is what makes Jesus different than anything else. Out of all deities that people say they worship, this right here makes him totally different. That we do not get good to go to God as every other religion says. But in Jesus, God came to man, took on man. And on the cross, he said, Father, Father, why are you forsaking me? In other words, he was separate from his father in that moment because the Bible says he became sin. He became every sin that we've ever done. He took it on. He became it. And he was separate from his father. And he shed his blood so that you and I could not only go to heaven, but we could have him right now on earth. There's no one else like him. That's why we worship and adore him. That's why his name is growing in fame. His movement is spreading, and it's never going to stop because upon this rock I will build the church on Jesus, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You can't shake the name of Jesus. You can't shake the blood of Jesus. You can't stop heaven. You can't stop his love coming down and doing this for any of us that receive him. And yet some of us have been taught or believe lies. Here's a couple of them. I've done too many wrong things for God to use me. Who told you that? God didn't. If a preacher told you that, he was lying. If you told yourself that, your mind is lying to you. 
I have to get cleaned up, then come to church. Or I say it differently. I have to get cleaned up, then come to God. Who told you that? I can't do anything for God because there's things wrong in my life. Who told you that? Those are lies. At City Church, we don't believe that. At City Church, we don't believe that you go to heaven by obeying the church rules. We don't believe you go to heaven because you obey everything that the preacher tells you to do. We go to heaven because we are saved by grace through faith And Jesus has washed us clean, and we are presented innocent before God the Father, and we go to heaven because of what God has done, not because of what we have done. And we believe we can come at City Church, or anywhere for that matter, and be tattered and torn and stinky and smelly of all of our filth, and God will welcome us home because our dirt never gets him dirty, but rather his blood cleans up our dirt and makes us who we're called to be. Man, I feel good, and I just had coffee. We believe that you and I can do something for God and at the same time be struggling with things in our life because we believe we don't do things for God to go to heaven. We want to do things for God because he brought heaven to us. We don't come to church so we can go to heaven. I hope you come to church, and I'm so glad you're here on this rainy day. It's awesome. But we come to church because we love God, and we're reaching for hope, and we need community. We don't come here to go to heaven. We're going to heaven if you receive Jesus. We don't give our tithes and offerings to earn merit in heaven so that he gives us stars that we can go there someday. I got five gold stars. I'm going to heaven. We give our tithes and offerings because he asks us to. And we freely give because we freely have received. We don't do any of this to go to heaven. We do it because he first loved us and his blood has washed us white as snow. Man, I love Jesus. This is the profound truth of our Christian faith, ladies and gentlemen. That when you and I come to God, any record against us is clean. And we are made new. Now, what's powerful is when you and I receive this, we have now supernatural peace. That that peace I mentioned, I, I believe we have new beginnings. I believe we have a redo in life. We have a way to move forward. But then you would say, Pastor Dave, wait a minute. I've received Jesus, and he's cleaned my record, but I still struggle with certain things. Does this mean this is null and void if I struggle? Because, quite frankly, don't all of us struggle with something? Absolutely not. Our record is clean. And the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we sin... He is faithful and just to forgive our sins when we confess them. So this may sound gross to you, but stay with me. This is spiritual, not physical. Jesus will never run out of blood. This is not physical blood. This is spiritual. In other words, you and I can come to God every day of our life, and if we've done something wrong, he has enough blood to wash that sin away. Every day. What's the Bible say? Every morning new mercies he gives to me. And great is his faithfulness. You and I, this is so profound that you and I can have this great opportunity to have a brand new look. A brand new look is not maybe I come to Jesus and all of a sudden I'm the weight I want to be. I have the clothes I want to wear. I'm just looking different. I got a new haircut. Man, I came to Jesus and everything looks great. It's probably not going to happen that way. After we come to Jesus, we'll probably be the same weight. Have the same clothes. Look the same. But the brand new look isn't about the outward. The brand new look is about the inside. That on the inside, I am totally clean and totally new. And if I'm clean on the outside, then it's going to show up on the outside. Oh, what a change he brought to my life. 
And so I want to encourage you that you and I have this opportunity to totally be clean. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews 10.22 that our conscience, that inner part of our mind, can be cleaned by the blood of God. In Hebrews 9.14, in the King James Version, it says our conscience will be purged with the blood of Jesus to serve him. Some of us, our conscience knows what we've done. Please hear this. Some of us, we know our conscience is just rattled with all the things we've done. We don't feel good about it. Even as we come to Jesus, we're just like, man, this is what I've done. Please hear me and look this up on your own for the notes in the back of your worship guide. In Hebrews 9.14, he will purge our conscience with his blood. So in other words, our conscience is purged, and then we do acts of service not to be saved. We do acts of service to rebuild our conscience. Some would say, Pastor Dave, I have a little secret in my life that I don't want no one to know. I'm going to write it real small because I want no one to know. It's really down there. I'm struggling with that attitude, struggling with that habit, struggling with that behavior, struggling with that private condition, struggling in our marriage, struggling. It's really small. I don't want anyone to see it. I want it to be a secret. Here's the great thing about Jesus. Can Jesus touch that? For it reaches the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest, smallest secret in the valley. Oh, it's the blood. That gives me strength from day unto day. And it will never lose its power. Folks, this right here is the bedrock of why we're going to heaven. This is massive. And this is for us. Now, my final thoughts. We know that we struggle on going, and so I just told you we ask God to forgive us, and he forgives us. Just because we struggle with something doesn't mean we're not saved. Like when I was growing up, you know, on Sunday you're saved. Monday you may be saved. By Wednesday, go back to midweek service and get saved all over again. Friday, you're like the devil's child, you know. And then Saturday, who knows what you are. And Sunday, get saved all over again. That's wrong teaching. The blood of Jesus isn't fickle from Monday to Tuesday. Monday, yes. Tuesday, no. Monday, that's not. So even if I'm struggling, that doesn't mean I'm not saved. When I come to Jesus and receive Christ like that young lady did last night, she's now a daughter of God. That doesn't mean all her issues are going away, but it does mean spiritually her record is clean. And so when we struggle, we can come to Jesus and say, forgive me, and he forgives us. So I'm not, so please hear me, I'm not teaching we get saved all over again five times a week. That's not what I'm saying. That's wrong. What I'm saying is we're saved, and if I miss it and I mess up, I can go to Jesus and he will blot out that thing one more time and clean my record as many times as it's needed. Thank God for Jesus. In my remaining minutes, here's why I think we have some struggles to receive this. At times it's hard to let go of the old record against us. Sometimes it's difficult Because guilt and shame, I'm convinced the longer I do this, the longer I serve God for myself as a leader, I'm convinced that guilt and shame wreak havoc on so many people. This is why I tell my story here. I don't do it to talk about myself. I'm not doing it to regurgitate old facts. I'm talking first for myself. Every time I tell you, I get stronger. But I'm trying to mold this church and those online that we're not going to be embarrassed about where we come from. And too many people, after they come to Jesus, are still embarrassed of their story. But, folks, we don't have to be because Jesus has set us free. We're clean. But one of the battles is guilt and shame. Pulls on us. Pulls on us to, yeah, okay, this is good, but I don't know. Maybe old relationships 
our old patterns of ourselves pull on us. So we can be clean. Please hear me. I want to say this as, as, as simple as I can. We can. How many know we can be clean in the blood of Jesus? This truth can be 100% truth. And how many know that we can still, if we don't let this go from a song and a good Bible doctrine and, and, and all that, if we don't take this and apply it, we can be clean by our record and still repeat old patterns of anger. Treat our wife wrong. Treat our husband wrong. Treat our kids wrong. Treat women in general wrong. Not love people based on gender or race or financial status. How can that be? And people say, well, this is fake. It's not fake. It's Jesus has done a work in our life We have to apply it in our life. Are you with me at 11? And so here's my thoughts before I go. We have to take this truth that I've illustrated and apply it that we become better people. I got changed in 1996 in June of that year, in the month of June, at uh, at Manchester College in Manchester, Indiana on a Wednesday night. Totally changed. I did not get healed of my anger and molestation and issues in my life until 2007. I know what I'm talking about. Was I clean those nine years, 11 years? Of course. But I hadn't let God go in me and break off old patterns yet. Are you staying with me? So I want to encourage you. I've lived through this. My marriage got better. Someone asked me this week with a young couple a leader on the campus, and they said, when did your marriage get smoother, or if it was rocky, when did it get better? I said, when I changed. Not when she changed, not when our house was different, not with a new car, when I changed. When I changed, my marriage got better. I had to take this truth and apply it and not be angry anymore in terms of sinning with my anger. Had to take this truth and apply it to my actions. This is where God wants us to go. This is what I'm big about at City Church. We major on the major. What's the majors at City? Heart healed, heart clean, heart changed. That's the majors. We take doctrine and we apply it that our heart is changed, our heart is clean, our heart is healed. And we become different people. The beauty of this in closing is not, this may sound crazy to you, The beauty of this, yes, it's amazing. My record is clean. I am clean before God the Father. He looks at me and he says, you are clean. I'm like, this is crazy because I know I'm not. And, and, And that's phenomenal. But even the greater truth, stay with me, the greater truth of this teaching and this doctrine is that I can live a different way. Because I have a brand new look from the inside out. My attitude can change. My private behavior can change. How I handle stress can change. How I speak to my kids, how I talk to my wife, how I treat people. I can live different. I can respond different. I can be who I'm called to be. I can do what I'm called to do. This is not just a Jedi mind trick to help me cope with my stuff. I can be free through the power of Jesus. I can live different. That is the great truth. If you're struggling today with something, it's ongoing, an addiction, a pattern, your private pattern, public pattern, doesn't matter, and, and, and you feel like, Pastor Dave, man, I've prayed so many times and the blood of Jesus covered me, I want to encourage you today, go a step further and get accountability. We can all sit here and say, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. Say it fast enough to speak in tongues. Okay, that's wonderful. But how we take this because remember, the, the Apostle Paul said he canceled the record against us. He cleaned us, folks. How do we take this and apply it? Get accountability if you need it. Get someone in your life that will challenge you and speak to you. Pull the rope tight, if you will, and make you, okay, I'm going to do this. 
Some of us maybe today need accountability. Others of us maybe today are flooded with guilt and condemnation, guilt and shame. And Jesus wants to set you free. No more embarrassment, no more cloud, no more uh, you know, being ashamed. Nothing to be ashamed of. Others of us maybe today need to take this truth and make amends with somebody. Please hear me at City Church. I will never believe or teach the idea that I've heard in churches that Jesus has forgiven me so I don't need to address what I did to you. That is not biblical. That's lazy faith. If I do something wrong to you, this is 100% true spiritually. I have to make it right by you. That doesn't mean if I say sorry to you that I am disavowing the blood of Jesus. That's a totally false concept. The fact I'm telling you I'm sorry proves that the blood of Jesus is washing me and changing my character, and I'm making amends for where I've done wrong. So today, if you need to make amends with someone, please do it. Today, if you need an accountability partner, please receive it. Today, if you are loaded with guilt and shame, I wish I could give you a one, two, three, boom, and be gone. But I would say today, I pray you'd receive this message and that you would believe what God says about you and you would take small steps and have that shame and guilt removed. Because the blood of Jesus makes us clean. How many love Jesus today?